Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I was doing some research today for another great Emery Tate game and I wanted to find out how Emery Tate got his final International Master norm. Now you need three norms to become an International Master so I wanted to find out which tournament he got his final norm in. And with some not so intense research I discovered his final norm was from the World Open in Philadelphia in the year 2006. The top Grandmaster, Gatikamski, won the tournament in a Blitz playoff, and you may also recognise a few other faces at the tournament. So this is great news, we found the tournament that Emery Tate got his final norms in. Let's take a look at his games that brought him his IM title. Well, not so fast, because the games actually do not exist. I've checked numerous databases, website pages and old archives, and I can't find these games anywhere. And it's a shame because these are the games that everyone says are amazing and full of attacking play, and also brought him his norm. So historically they're quite valuable. The only game I could find from the 34th World Open was actually a loss for Emery Tate against a strong grandmaster Giovanni Vescovi in round 3. Let's have a quick look at this game then. So in this game we get to this position, Emery Tate is playing with the white pieces, and he goes in for bishop takes g5 in this position. With black now playing a nice check, queen to c5, which hits Emery's king and also the bishop at the same time. White now played king to h1. And here Vescovi played an amazing move. The sacrifice, bishop takes g2 with check. The bar's going crazy, but it's actually a dead equal position. But it's very difficult for white to find the right moves here. Emery took the bishop with king takes g2, and black fold in with rook to f2, check. Now there's basically one or two moves that you can play in this position. King to h1 actually loses the queen to c6, check. Um, after the bishop d5, takes. The rook has to block, takes. King to g1, checkmate. So you can't play king to h1. King to g1 also follows a similar fate with rook to e2. King to h1, queen c6, and once again, black will deliver mate on g2. So there's only two moves that are really viable here, and it's either king to g3 or king to h3. Now, which one would you pick? Well, amazingly, king to h3 actually does draw the game. It's very complicated, though. If black continues with rook to f8, we have to play a move like rook to e3 in this position. There's queen to f5 check, the king goes back to g3, and after rook takes b2, white is able to hold on with a move like rook to e1, because after check, the king must go to g4, and then it's just a perpetual queen to f5, king to g3, and queen to f2, and white should then go king to g4 and just completely draw the game. However, if you mistakenly go king h3 in this position, it's over with queen takes h2, king g4, and rook to g2 is checkmate. So after Vescovi played rook to f2, Tate now played the losing move king to g3. Black played rook to f8, and there's no way to stop a move like queen to c7 here with check. Tate played rook to e6, it was queen c7 check and white resigned the game here. So why did he resign? Well, after king to h3, queen takes h2 is played. There'll be king to g4 and rook to g2 would be checkmate. And a very nice finish for black in this position. So unfortunately, that was the only game that was available in the date space for this particular tournament. So where are all the other games? Well, I'd have a look and... The ChessDrum.net had an incredible interview and write-up on Tate's great victories, where they were saying, For decades Emery Tate Jr. has been at the cutting edge of chess. The accomplished tactician gained a crucial step in his quest of the Grandmaster title. In the 34th edition of the World Open, Tate scored the requisite score for earning his third and final norm. With the norm already in hand after eight rounds, he beat Colombian Grandmaster Alonso Zapata in a last-round thriller. When asked about his accomplishment Tate told the chess drum re-emphasized his focus on the GM title, but stated that the international master title was indeed an important step. Tate beat GM Laurent Fresnet of France, but stated that the pivotal game was with rising star Jake Kleiman. He had lost two consecutive games and was determined to stop the bleeding.
as, as we say in the business, I had to stop the bleeding. And uh, to beat uh, a very talented young man named uh, Jake Kleiman, to beat him uh, with the black pieces, especially in the fashion that I beat him, uh, generating a virtual mating attack, uh, generating a mating attack, and he had to cough up pawns, and he went down in flames. To generate that mating attack with the black pieces was not only satisfying, but it was really intrinsic to my efforts. And uh, had I not done that, uh, we wouldn't be having this interview, per se, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You also beat Laurent uh, Fresnay of, of France. Uh, you beat yes. him. And, and that effort was uh, very impressive. I was impressed with my style and skills. Uh, yet, on the other hand, your prior question said, you know, it's, it's odd that beating uh, Kleiman would overshadow that, but beating Kleiman was more a, a test of character as opposed to a test of skill. I think we've alluded to the fact earlier that my skill's never been in question, and people have questioned other factors. But uh, having lost both games yesterday, that was, um, and to come back and beat Kleiman this morning with Black the way I did, that proved character, and it overshadowed beating Fresnay. After having earned his international master norm, Tate gave a public display when analyzing his game with Zapata. A virtual coliseum of 30 to 40 players gradually formed around the popular master and were treated to his entertaining commentary peppered with wit, imagination and his customary exclaim. In an exclusive interview, Tate gave a side to the chess world that is not often seen, but those that know him understand his passion and energy for chess. With a renewed vigor and determination, perhaps we have yet to see the best that Emery Tate has to offer. So after that incredible write-up from the chess trip, I thought I must find these games. I did search really hard, but I could not find them. So either they were never fully recorded, or they're hidden away somewhere on some random database. If anyone has come across them, please do let me know, as it would be great to go through them. The author of Emery Tate's Best Games was also looking for them a few years ago, as he writes, I couldn't find his pivotal game versus Jake Kleiman from the World Open in 2006. I had even spoke to Jake who though surprised at my inquiry told me he had looked for the game in his database and couldn't find the game. He was very sorry he couldn't find it. I thanked him for even returning my message let alone looking for the game. I also shared the video tribute with him, he seemed to be impacted by that, as Emery personally mentions him in the video several times. I was not surprised the game was still missing after all it was 9 years ago and the online record of the event, World Open 2006 is surprisingly sparse. Emery mentions that his game against Kleinman was the most pivotal in securing his IM title. However, Tate also beat a well-known French grandmaster, Laurent Fressinet. You may know him from the famous two-week, two-slow Magnus Carlsen blitz game. Come on, you bird. You want to draw? No draw for bad French. <laughs> but luckily, there are several images of Tate playing against Fressinet. He looks very young here. Again, there's no existence of this game. But, from the images, we may be able to have a look at several positions from it. The first image is actually relatively clear. We can see that the pawn is on e4, e5, knight to f3, and knight to c6 on the board. And from another clear image, we also get this position on the board as well, with black to move, because um, Fresnay's clock appears to be running. And the computer actually gives this as an equal position for both sides, amazingly. So white's knight's attacking this f4 pawn, the g pawn also attacks it, however, black also has a defense on f to f4. Apparently the best move in this position for black is to play their rook backwards to rook to e7, whereupon white may now take with g takes f4. You can also play rook to d4 in this position, and after takes, h takes, knight to e5, again the position is given as equal. But sadly we don't have the game, so in this position we don't actually know what each side played. And finally after some squinting and some enhancing, Zoom in right here on this spot. we get what looks like the final position where they seem to be ready to shake hands. And... I believe I've set the position up correctly, however, I'm not too sure if there is a pawn on f6. Either way, though, white looks like they're absolutely crushing this position, and Tate did actually go on to win the game, and said it was a, an amazing game to beat such a, a young uh, grandmaster. There's also another image from the event, however, I'm not sure which game this is from, but this was the position on the board, with Tate playing with the black pieces, and it's black to move, 
However, you can see from the bar, Black, unfortunately, is getting absolutely crushed here. So I presume it's from one of his losses from the event. <clears throat> With the best move now considered to be E takes D5, but then comes Knight to F6, check. Bishop takes F6, E takes F6, check. King to D8, and White should maybe be able to play Queen to D4 here. And this position looks really bad for black with moves like rook to e7 coming in. Knight to f7 is also threatened. So yeah, black may be able to resign in this game. Finally, there was a final image with half the board visible, which is seems to be Tate's first game of victory over 2,200 ELO player Raphael Ferdzik. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Apologies if not. Anyway, these games... And these images seem to suggest that Tate had some immense games. So it's a shame that they've all disappeared and we can't find them. All in all, this was a great tournament for Tate, scoring six points out of nine and securing his international master title. He was hopeful he would go on to become a grandmaster, but sadly, this was not to be. Perhaps one day these missing games will show up. It would be amazing to see them, uh, but maybe we just need to accept that some of these games are just unfortunately lost to history. Thank you very much for watching.